welcome you this morning to church, worshiping together, celebrating Easter, our risen Savior. We're going to ask you to stand with us this morning as we open up with He Lives.
misplaced the cord. I apologize for fumbling around. Um, how many was who came yesterday? Who came yesterday? Did y'all have a good time? Yeah, it, it was a it was a beautiful it was a beautiful time, and uh, that's what teamwork uh, will do. I really uh, we try to give a shout out to Nathan. Uh, he, he was uh, so, such a, a large part of that, and uh, we miss him this morning. But um, as, as I've been told uh, this morning, I better not say that uh, this is being recorded. I was gonna uh, I won't say that. <laughs> we miss we miss Nathan. We miss Nathan uh, for for sure. Um, today's a, a, a beautiful day, and um, as you, you know, in the foyer, I don't know if you saw it as you came in, but we've made a place where you can take some pictures and, and that sort of thing, and please make use of that. Um, as we look at the calendar, you know, some significant dates and that sort of thing, uh, our next, you know, uh, I don't think it gets any higher than this. This is the upper, and you know, the upper echelon of the, the holy days. Uh, people around the world are, are gathering to, to worship our, our risen Savior. The tomb is empty, and we, and we celebrate that. But the next, I guess, large day on, the, on our calendar will be you know, May, the, uh, May the 13th. Who knows what May the 13th is? It's Mom's Day. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, give you an invitation. Please make your, your way back. We want to uh, have a good time on, on Mom's Day as well. But... Uh, I think Johnny's already said it. It's probably being said all around the world. He's alive, yeah. right? He's alive. Uh, we, we need to shout it. We need to tell it. We sang a little bit about it, uh, but he's, he, he is alive. And, and later we'll, we'll sing uh, some more about that. But as I was contemplating what to share today, um, you know, certainly this, this uh, you, you read the, at Christmas time, you read the Christmas story and then you, at Easter or Resurrection Day, as, as some people uh, call it, uh, you go back and, and you read the story. And I was just thinking about the emotion uh, that uh, Mary and Joanna and, and the ladies that went to the tomb, and even the disciples, you know, the, the despair you know, of losing the teacher, the losing um, Christ. Uh, Christ tried to prepare him for what was going, going on. He even said, he even told him, hey, I, I'm going to come back. And we were, we were going to meet in Galilee, but still the emotion, the, the roller coaster, I can't, I can't really imagine what, what they were sensing that day. Um, it, it's, death, death is, is um, it, it's a hard place. We know that uh, somebody quoted it, um, Nick quoted it this morning, a reference that it's important unto the man wants to die, that scripture, and, and wants to, uh, and then the judgment. But for them to, Lose, lose their teacher, the one that they followed after, the one they had left everything for, the disciples lost Christ, and um, but then Sunday came, and it changed everything, and it certainly changes everything for us today, because the message is still alive, and uh, that, that's what I want to talk to you about, the, the importance of the message. This this unique message, the message of, of the resurrection, I'll call it today, has always been uh, to and really for the, the body of Christ. It's, uh, if you will, it's the past, the, the present, and the, and the future body, the saints, uh, because we participate with this. Now, as I, um, as I begin, I just want to go ahead and give you a full warning. Uh, most of the time I, I speak a, a little more topical and uh, I feel a, a little bit more freer to uh, leave my notes and that sort of thing. But today I decided to, to preach more through a, a, a scripture text, if you will. So I'm going to probably be reading my notes more than you're, you're used to seeing me read my notes and reading certain scriptures. Uh, but that's my desire today is make sure that um, the story that was so important to the early church... Let's make sure we, we've got a grasp of it ourselves. And it's not just a ho-hum day. And it's not a ho-hum desire to give this testimony. Because we are the carrier of the good news today. It's, it's on us. Now, we're Christ died how long ago? A couple thousand years ago, we believe. 
Uh, certainly, more than likely, not on the 25th of December. But we know that we, we know that he was born, you know, and we know that he, he died. But today we celebrate an empty tomb, a risen Savior, and uh, that's uh, that, that's certainly uh, certainly what we need to, to carry on. T today is not about soul sleep. Today is not about uh, being reincarnated, reincarnation. Today's not about uh, annihilation, where some people say, well, if there's more yin than yang, or if there's more good than bad in you, if, the good, if you're good, we we'll go to heaven. But if you're bad, you will cease to exist. And you're only remembered by God. That's, that's bad teaching. Actually, that's false teaching. And, but that's not what we celebrate today. We celebrate something that we will participate in. Now, if we um, would go over to India, we could find a place, not really a tomb of uh, Buddha, but we, because Buddha was, was uh, cremated. But we know that he died. We know that his ashes is in monuments. We know that it is in buildings that still exist. If uh, we went to Saudi Arabia, we certainly could go to a, a place, a tomb of uh, Muhammad because he was buried. Great teachers, good teachers, but not a risen Savior. Not the truth that we have in Christ Jesus. Uh, this is, this is, it separates the, for the, uh, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. It separates all the other religions that are, are taught and followed all around the globe. This is the message that we've seen to uh, share today. Um, and it's all around the world. Uh, these, uh, this, this day of, of Sunday... Uh, the day of resurrection. Yeah, so it's about a 20, as the, the calendar goes, it's about a 24 day, oh, excuse me, a 24 hour celebration. I had a friend over in uh, Pakistan. And this is what he wrote. Uh, I read it about midnight last night. He said, He is risen. Happy resurrection day. And experience his unconditional love. Uh, and that's, that's what our desire is for us to celebrate and for, for people all around certainly here for us to sense, to have faith in this, uh, this amazing grace, this amazing love. And it's a hope for, for all ages, it's, uh, through all, throughout all time. And it's what, what today, if I, I, I can't, um, what I desire to convey is, this is, it's a current message. It's not just a message of, uh, that, we, that we read about and we will read about in a moment. It is fresh today. It's real. It's just as li alive uh, today as it was when uh, they found their way to, 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 the, uh, to the, when the angels were there and said, hey, he's not here. It's alive. And this is our promise. This is the blessed hope that one day we'll participate in the, the same way. It says that Christ, uh, that Christ was the first fruit of resurrection. And as a Christian... Uh, this is our future as, a, as well. Uh, listen to the words of Christ. I'm actually, this is not our text. Um, just to open in here. Our text is actually going to come out of 1 Corinthians. But this is the words of Christ out of John 14. He says, After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. He was speaking to his disciples. So I, I want to be clear um, that let's make sure our belief lines up with Scripture. He was speaking to his disciples when he said that because I live, you will live, live also. It's for the followers of Christ. That promise is only for the followers of Christ. Now, uh, again, I say make sure your belief is correct with what's in Scripture. I read this today at a funeral just a few days ago, and I want us to read it now. This is Christ speaking. If you, you have a Bible that's printed in red uh, of the words of Christ, it, it means that Christ said this, and let, let me read this. He's trying to prepare his disciples for uh, the, the coming resurrection, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the coming uh, crucifixion, the flogging, the whipping, the mocking. He's trying to prepare them, but this is what he said. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. We believe that, right? We believe he's coming back. He says, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also. Hey, Carl, that was good to see you, man. It, Jesus, later on, the same, same scripture says, Jesus said, I am the way. Not a way. It says the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. This is what it says. The words of Christ it says, no man comes to the Father except through me. Which means the blood of Christ washes away your sin. That's the only way we're going to heaven. It must be applied to our lives. The blood of Christ. That's the only way. Being good, that's all, that's all good. Right? We, we want everybody to be good, right? It'll be less crime. But please, please listen to me. Being good and moral, we want to live around neighbors that are good and moral. But being good and moral, the only thing that's going to do is keep you out of jail. And I've heard it said, but only the blood of Jesus Christ is going to keep you out of hell. So let, let's make sure we know, make sure our, our theology, what we think, lines up with Scripture. And this promise that we celebrate today of, of resurrection is only for the blood bulb child of God. Now, I know we have, thank you for, for being here today, all of you. I know we have some visitors in the house, and uh, just welcome back anytime that the door is open. Um, Johnny, Johnny mentioned Connect card. We also have a small gift card for you. Please make sure you get one of those. But sometimes we, we wrestle, I, well, I know I do as a, a minister, I wrestle about what to share. Certainly I want, I want the, the, um, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to make sure I'm, I'm connected to people and it's a fresh word. And it's not like I've gone on the internet and, and looked up ser sermon.com or ser sermon central because they're there. But sometimes I think, well, Walter, if, if you say the right words, or you, you say, preach this nice little sermon, and maybe if you smile enough, maybe, maybe the, the visitors will come back. And, and look, I want all of you to come back. I want you to come back next Sunday and, and bring a friend with you, right? And then the next Sunday, let them bring a friend. That's, that's what we, we desire. But... Just because we have a crowd doesn't mean that I'm going to soften the word. I'm not going to compromise the word. Because this message that we talk about today, the message of the resurrection, the, the message of Jesus Christ, these people gave their lives for. That's how serious of a message it is. And I must say, all roads do not lead to heaven. This might be, I don't know how many is here today, this might be a little bit bigger crowd than we normally have, I don't know. But it seemed like Christ, when he, when he spoke, when he had a large crowd, he, he would throw, he would drop some bombs out there. He would throw it out and he said, look, if you don't you hate your father and hate your mother, hate, hate your children, in comparison to your love for me, you're not worthy to follow me. And you would you'd almost start apologizing for Christ talking to you. Christ, what are you doing? You don't, don't speak so hard to the crowd. But I share all this in love today. But this is what it, I want to share the truth with you guys. Is that good? And, and sometimes, I don't know if we all, always want to hear the truth. I, I bought a bag of jelly beans. This is, my, this is probably my favorite candy. Um, anybody like jelly beans? Yeah, it's probably my favorite candy. Uh, or or dark dark chocolate is, is good too. But I don't want to know the truth about this candy, right? <laughs> don't tell me how it was in it and or how bad it is. I just you know I want to eat it. Don't don't mess with me. My truth is that it's good. And maybe the, the green uh, food coloring is has one nutrient in it, and that's good. For
from a body, and the pink ones has got another nutrient. Don't don't mess up the way I think, right? So, but this is what this is what Scripture says. It says that the truth will the truth will set you free. So as we read about, um, I have, I'm sorry, but I haven't got to my text yet. But I want to read this because I want I want to make sure I'm clear today. That it, it is about Jesus Christ, His blood. He died for our sins. We know that He died, and we know that He was buried. But today we celebrate that he, he, he rose again, and we're going to participate. His followers, His disciples, and his, the Christians are going to celebrate. But this is what it says. Just a, a couple verses out of John, and then I'll finally get to the text. Do not be surprised at this, for a time is coming when. Those who are in the tombs will hear his voice, and they will come out. Those who did good things will come out to a resurrection of new life, and those who did evil will come out to a resurrection of judgment. That is, to be sinners. So as far as truth, that I'm going to put a period there, and I'm going to finally get to my sermon. Uh, speaking about the resurrection of Christ, for some reason, the, um, the maybe a title or a thought came through my mind, and this is what's going to be the, the title of the sermon. The, the title is "The Proof Is in the Pudding." The, the old saying actually began the proof of the pudding. The proof of the pudding it came actually from a different country, and just FYI, it's not about a dessert. Right, it's not about a, a little um, custard, or if you will. Actually, pudding used to reference sausage meat, and uh, and that can be a scary thought. Or what can you put in sausage meat too, if you think about it, right? But um, I, I, I googled this, and this is what it says: the proof of the pudding is in the eating, which means you have to eat the pudding to know what's inside. For those of you who are oh, okay, and, and, so the modern version is the proof. The proof is in the pudding implies that there's a lot of evidence that I will not go through. So that's the proof that is in the pudding. There's a lot of evidence I'm not going to go through today. But you should take my word for it, or you should go through all the evidence yourself. But this is what Paul writes. Now, my reference today, or our, our, um, our passage today, is 1 Corinthians chapter. 15. And I chose that to speak about the resurrection because it is the, it's about the early church. It's what they were talking about. And actually, the, today's text was written before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We, we normally read the, the, the story of the ladies going to the tomb, and uh, we hear the, the message that uh, he's not here. Go, go and tell. Um, so as you're turning, I'm, I'm going to read the, I guess, traditional Easter Sunday morning, a couple of verses. He's not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come, see the place where he's, he was lying. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you and get to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy and ran to report to the disciples. I want to talk about this morning about the proof is in the pudding. I came across this quote recently. This guy's name was Professor Thomas Arnold. He lived in the early 1800s. And this, this uh, one paragraph is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, thousands and tens of thousands have gone through the evidence which attests through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Piece by piece, as carefully as ever, a judge summed up of the most important case. I have done myself and many times over to persuade others, not, oh, excuse me, not to persuade others, but to sa satisfy myself. I have been used for many years of study the history of other times to examine and to weigh the evidence of those who have written about them. And I know of no fact in the history of mankind which is proved by better and fitter evidence of every kind. 
So basically he's saying, he's alive. He's alive. He is alive. Now how do you know that? How do you know that? The Word has told you that. It's in my heart. And I believe somebody's told you about it too. The importance of the testimony of the gospel. The, the testimony is important. That's what I want to talk to you for a few minutes about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3. Now I make no, known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you. Remember, this is the early church. He's already visited it. He helped plant this church. He's already written to them. This is the first writing that we know about, but he certainly, we've got two recordings of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, but we know according to the way he, he words himself, he wrote many, more um, letters or epistles to this church. But this is what they were talking about. This is what the early church was talking about. Now, we're the church of 2018, right? And I ask you real quick, but before I read any more, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are you talking about? When you're uh, and you just think about your daily conversations. Is the resurrection of Jesus Christ in your conversation? Let's, let's uh, I'm gonna start with verse one again. Now I make no, excuse me. Now I make note to you, brethren. The let, wait a minute. Listen for a minute. That's good. That's that's good. Now I know. I, I apologize to the folks who it really um, kind of grates your nerve to hear a baby cry. But but but, yeah, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. But to me, this is beautiful. This is beautiful when you hear a baby cry, and, and certainly we have a nursery, but we wanted everybody to be together today to celebrate. So back, back to, um, oh, she took my jelly beans. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I want to try to, this is my third try, so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, first three verses right now. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also I, you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you, as of the first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the uh, scriptures. So this is a, the foundational, this is the foundational teachings of the early church. The gospel, the gospel, uh, just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit about five words right here just to, to pick up what the gospel should, should happen with the gospel. The gospel should be preached. Did y'all pick that up? The gospel should be preached. I, I'm a, uh, I've got five points here and then I'm going to read a little bit longer but I, what, this is back to my exposition. I, for each one, I'm going to reference a, a, another scripture that helps prove this point of what uh, Paul has written about. Now, I'm going to pause for about 15 seconds if you're going to follow with me, but I'm not going to pause for a minute for you to find the scripture, okay? Just believe me, I'm reading it pretty close out of the translation that I selected. Um, so, the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of this resurrection, it has to be preached. Mark... 16:15. And this is what it says. This is also a similar quote out of Matthew uh, 28. But this is what it says as far as the gospel is to be preached. And he said to them, go. Now who's them? The disciples, the followers of Christ. I is ye one? <laughs> yes. Amen. Oh, I said not him. Are you a follower of Christ? I want you to raise your hand. 
Praise Jesus, that looked good. So these things that I'm going to hit on is not just for the people that Paul's writing to. It's for you and it's for me. The, the gospel is to be preached uh, into all the world, or excuse me, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. The next point, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the resurrection is to be received. The one I picked out to, to read to you guys is John chapter 1, verse 12. And this is what it says. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God. Now again, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to be homework. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Everybody is not the children of God. Now, everybody is made in God's image. But to become a son or daughter of Jesus Christ, or of God, excuse me, the son or daughter of God, the blood of Christ must be applied to your life to be a son or daughter. It has to be received. Next point. This word's not used in, in the translation I I read it, but the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is to be obeyed. The one I picked out was Romans. There's as many we could we could uh, speak about. But Romans chapter 1, verse 5. And this is what it, how it reads. But thanks be to God, though you, you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has been proclaimed your allegiance to him. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the resurrection is to be kept. It, uh, the, what I read, it says to hold fast. And what that really means is to, to bring it, to, to keep it to your memory. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6, it reads like this. But Christ is faithful as a son of, over God's house that we are his house if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. And the last point uh, on this part is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of resurrection, is to be believed in your heart. I don't think you need to read this one. Most of you can quote the beginning verse here. John 3.16 or, or read John 3.16 to 3.20. This is speaking about believing the gospel in your heart. And I can't assume in a, a group this large that everybody believes. Yes, you may believe that Christ was a good teacher, that he died and he rose again, but do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of your life? I, I can't assume that. So please listen to these words. For God so loved you. Well, that's not that way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and the men love the darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does not who does evil hates light and does not come to the light of, for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Here it is. Paul was writing to the early church the church in Corinth about the importance of the message. You know that you basically say, you know what I've talk, talked to you about. You've already received it. Keep on, keep on sharing it. Basically he says that this is the message and I want to go back to the beginning. I, I, it's the first, uh, first quote of, uh, of today of a scripture. I want to go back to the beginning of this book. This is what he says. He says, Paul writes in the beginning, For I decided to do nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
And this is the conversation. It goes further into the chapter 15 about what he has preached. Now I'm going to go back to uh, chapter 15, verse 4, and I'm going to go through 9, excuse me, through 11. And that he was buried, meaning Jesus was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, which is Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom, who, who, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep or some have passed away, um, so we understand. Then he appeared to James, then, then to the apostles, and last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Pretty plain and, and you know, kind of, um, I, I, we understand that kind of language. I am what I am. And his grace towards me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them. But yet not I, but the grace of God within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and ye believe. Now, if we get back to verse 3, it speaks about Christ died. If we put a period right there, Christ died and we put a period right there. That puts him like all the rest of the, the great teachers. But we're not just following the great teacher. We're, we're following the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, and it wasn't a period at that, the storyline there. That was the end of the paragraph. It goes on that he, he was buried for three days, and now he's alive. Yes. And that changes everything, because I, I promise you, if we, there was a period that Jesus Christ died, period, most of us would not be here today. There wouldn't be much to talk about, wouldn't be much to celebrate, but it's more of a story. What I want to talk to us uh, today about is hearing the testimonies. It says that, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. And this is the, the testimonies. <clears throat> Verse 8 says this. Excuse, excuse me. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to talk, I want to, talk to you about the testimonies that I, I see in this verse, these verses I just read. First is the testimony of the body and how, how important our testimony is. If we go to Acts chapter 1. Again, that's it's the early church. These are the words of Christ uh, before he descended. This is one of the plans of action because we know that Christ left the plan, right? If Christ didn't leave a plan, we wouldn't be talking about it today. Does that make sense? So the testimony of the body, meaning the church, the testimony of the church, and this is what it says, Acts chapter 1, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. This is the plan. How many believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back one day? Okay, what about if it's five years? Because I don't know, we don't know when it's going to be, right? What about if it's five years from now? For most of us, that'll be in our lifetime. Right? What about if it's 10 years? What about if it's 50 years before Christ's return? We can keep on going up. What about if it's 200 years before Christ's return? And we, we all think more than likely he'll come before that. But what about if it's 300 years after? What are you doing? What am I doing to make sure that they hear. The game plan of Christ was I will give you the Holy Spirit so that you can be my witnesses. Our, our testimony of the church is vital. The next testimony that I want to speak about real quickly is the testimony of Scripture. And the testimony of the Scripture is, is uh, crucial as well. Now, when, it, when Paul writes about the Scriptures, he's not talking about the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because they haven't even been written yet. He's talking about the Old Testament. So the one verse that I, I, I picked, uh, chose to, to uh, speak about or read about 
was out of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1, and this is what it says. Because there's many. There's many uh, uh, foretelling or, or prophecies that speak about Christ and his, his death, his resurrection, his healing properties of his body. But this is what it says in Jonah chapter 1. It says, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Does any of that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, absolutely. This is this is the, the uh, foreshadowing of the, the, the death and the, the resurrection of Christ. The testimony of the eyewitnesses. Now certainly we referenced um, Mary and Mary and Joanna and the other ladies that, that went there. It says with really with fear and with rejoicing too, kind of mixed emotion there of what was going on. But it says, Paul writes about he, Christ showed himself, revealed himself after the resurrection to Cephas, the 12, and the 500. The testimony, please listen to me, the testimony of the eyewitnesses is so vital. And the, the, the one that I, I came to, to read to you guys was when it was 11 disciples, right? And they had one um, betray Christ, Judas, and they had to select one more. So the, the scripture that I chose to read is out, out of uh, Acts, and they gathered together, there's 120 of them, and this is, this is what they said, the, the replacement for Judas, this is how important the eyewitness of the, the, the resurrection is, that's part of the criteria, it's part of the, um, the, the, cri the critical list that it must, be, they, it must be present, but this is what it says, Acts chapter 1, this is what it says. At this time, Peter stood up. Now, they're, they're getting ready to select a, a, a replacement. And this is what it says. At this time, Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren, a gathering about 120 persons, and said, the scripture has been fulfilled, meaning that we had to select another one because it was prophesied that Jesus would betray him. Therefore, it is necessary that other men who has accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So that was one of the criteria to re replace the other apostle. They must have seen the resurrection. They must have been present at that time. The testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is vital. The te and the testimony of Paul. I see that here. He, he left himself at the end. He said, I love labored among you. You know me. These sayings are trustworthy. These, these stories, these eyewitnesses are, are, are one of integrity. Just, just think about if this was a court of law. Because that's kind of what this truth has been carried throughout time for 2,000 years. Because I'm telling you, somebody would have dropped the ball if this was false teaching. We still would not, we would not be talking about it. Because they tried to, um, they made a plan to do away with it. But let's say they stole the body. But there was too many eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ resurrection there's, there's one more point I want to make I'm going to go jump up to verse verse, uh, excuse me, verse 2 and it speaks about this gospel and it speaks about not you know I hope you have not believed in vain there's a verse over in um in 2 Corinthians, the same, the same group of people, but this is what he, he wrote about, and it ties in to believing in vain. It says, test yourself to see that you're in the faith. Examine yourself, or do you not recognize this about yourself, that Jesus is in you, unless indeed you fail the test.
What I'm trying to share today is the foundation or foundational belief, the foundational teaching of the early church. I told you that it should be preached or it was preached, it was received, it was obeyed, it was kept by memory, and it was believed by the followers of Christ. But it is vital, it is essential for us, for this gospel, to embrace this, the, the same principles that I, I've, I've shared this morning. For you to preach it, who, me? Where is that, Walker? Yeah. If y'all remember just 10 minutes ago, I asked you how many are followers of Jesus Christ. It wasn't 100%, but it was a bunch of you guys, right? Maybe somebody won't pay any attention. Maybe you're embarrassed to raise your hand. It's, it's, it's fine. But this is what it says. The importance for us to do what, what he has uh, asked us to do. I'm going to ask the, uh, the praise team to come up. The importance of your testimony. Don't put it on me. It's our responsibility. Some of the last writings of Jesus Christ, his words that he uttered, is this. Matthew 28. How many is a disciple? How many is a follower? Whoa, wait a minute. You know I'm getting ready to come to a point now you're scared to raise your hand. What's up with that? How many are a follower of Jesus Christ? This is what it says. This is our instructions. This is not just to the disciples of that, of that year. It's to the disciples of this year, 2018. This is what it says. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen. Because I'm telling you, this verse is for you to apply to your life. It says, teaching them, teaching others to observe all things that I have commanded you. All things. And one of those things is believing in him. That he came to set us free. He died. He was flogged. He was ridiculed. He was spat upon. He was buried. But on the third day, the game changer, he rose again. And we celebrate today. And part of that responsibility of Resurrection Sunday is your testimony. When you leave here today, and we're going to sing a few songs, maybe that will resonate in your mind what we sing. But I want, when you leave here today, I want you to leave with responsibility on your shoulders, understanding that my voice is important. My voice to herald and to shout out, he's alive. Yes. He's alive because you have neighbors, you have friends, you have family members that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. It makes the difference. Guys, will you stand with us as we sing a couple songs and then we'll be dismissed.
just worship you, God, in this place today. Hallelujah. Here we are to worship you, Lord, light of the world. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for coming out of heaven, stepping into the darkness, oh Lord, to bring light, oh God, to us, Lord. We praise your holy name.
all of you that uh, had a big part yesterday, whether you came or you helped set up, um, thanks for, for being here. Um, one, one word of dismissal, if you had to bow, bow your head. So, Father, we celebrate your, uh, your plan of action and you sending Christ to this world to die for our sins, but it wasn't that, that but, the, but the death and the resurrection of your Son gave us the resurrection power and resurrection hope that is in us. So, God, may it uh, resound and may it uh, reverberate out, back out of our mouth that he's alive. How do I know that? Because he's alive in me. God, I ask that you'd bless these people, that you'd bless them indeed and keep them in safety. Uh, may they walk in peace and joy and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here.